now like to Ben Harris Quinney to close the case for the opposition and indeed the debate as a whole. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And I want to begin by thanking uh, Genevieve for her most kind introduction and for leaving out the reality of a Google search. Uh, of my name and also for uh, her fine and, and wonderful speech. Um, in point of fact though, uh, I was addressing the Cambridge Union solo, not as part of a debate, and I do consider it somewhat of an insult to have to share the, the podium with so many other people. But no, it is, it is more or less uh, an honour to be here at the Oxford uh, <laughs> Union and, and to stand in, in fact, for uh, Graham Brady, who is inexplicably busy today. <laughs> um, I offer you now the finest speech that can be prepared in 25 minutes in a cab. Um, I actually called for the Prime Minister to resign last night. Um, so in effect, I have gone some way to creating a vacancy for myself here at the Oxford Union, which uh, I was forced to do as last time I was invited to speak and you no platform me. Um, the trick is, I think, uh, to sneak in at the last minute before the left have a chance to rise mid-afternoon and rattle off a tweet. Um, I also understand that we are following Stormy Daniels uh, this evening, which is a hard act to follow, particularly on film. So I, uh, I apologise for the anti-climax that I present uh, to those of you hoping for a more exciting evening. I am technically a millennial, but even in my younger years, uh, I could not be described as a porn star. Uh, but, but first, a serious point before I get into the business at hand. This is an august chamber of a truly great institution. Um, those that are here will likely only realise the significance of your attendance in later years, as I uh, only realised uh, having attended the LSE. We <laughs> Talk about education this evening, which regardless of the form is useless without freedom of speech and debate. Please don't stifle it here at Oxford. Um, by all means, vote down those you disagree with, but do listen to them. Looking at my education more closely, I didn't go to a public school. Um, I would, if I could bear David Cameron's company, be considered uh, by him to be a serious oik, as he called George Osborne for going to uh, St. Paul's and look at my slothful dress this evening, uh, obviously I am such. Uh, so I'm not here to defend any one system of education because I'm of it, nor do I even plan to send my children if I have them to public school because I'm very tight with money. But what I am here to defend this evening is choice for parents and for young people because, sadly, we don't live in an ideal world. There's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all for education. And no one can claim to know what is best for a child, more so than the child themselves and their family. Margaret Thatcher made the perfect and searing accusation to the left that you don't want to raise the bottom up, you want to knock the top down. The truth is, a state school system will never be able to invest as much money into each pupil as the private system. And money isn't everything. I have a, 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 a quandary in this regard, but I, I don't want to send my children to private school because I don't want them to become remote from everyone else. But the outcomes, particularly for certain subjects at private schools, are unquestionably heavily linked to the investment in those subjects in the private sector. An investment that, in truth, the state will unfortunately never be able to make. Just look at drama. Eddie Redmayne, Dominic West, Damien Lewis, Benedict Cumberbatch. All rose from just two public schools that have produced more of our current crop of stellar actors than the rest combined. Yes, sir. The issue here, though, is that the private sector drains away large swathes of the human capital in terms of teachers, capital, resources and whatnot from the public sector, and does not therefore effectively cause a drainage that damages the choices of many of those who go and send the kids to the public sector and start to Thank you. It's, it's a fair point, and I hope to come to it um, in, in a few moments. Um, now, I, 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 I don't believe in this era of social justice warriors and virtue signalling that Oxford is intending to keep those from a state background out. 
But I do believe that Oxford realises that above all, it must keep standards up to continue its own noble pursuit of excellence. And I think that is the reason, rather than prejudice, that it draws roughly an equal number over the last 10 years from state schools and from private schools, despite just under 10% of pupils attending state schools. It would indeed be nice if Oxford could draw 90% of pupils from a non-fee paying school background without compromising standards, but it would also be nice uh, if we could all fly and Brexit actually meant Brexit. I am unusual in the Bow Group as among my peers as chairman, only one other is from a state school background. Um, and from the entirety of our nearly 70 year history, a slightly larger uh, percentage and half of our current patrons attended grammar schools. But what we see in the Bow Group year after year among the young people that come through is that generally those of a public school background are better prepared to start work after university and more politically knowledgeable uh, than those from other backgrounds. We apply absolutely no background prejudice to our recruitment and simply require uh, new people to be of conservative beliefs. My belief, in fact, is that a genuinely working class voice in the conservative movement would be <coughs> transformational. But even as a state school kid, I can tell you that the Bow Group would be far poorer were it not for uh, those that have contributed that went to public school. If my opposite number at the Fabian Society was honest, um, I'm sure he would have to say the same uh, about the Fabian Society. Both organisations would undoubtedly be poorer uh, without the intake from all types of schools. But the public school contribution cannot be ignored. Indeed, as, as he said, he himself may not be here this evening were it not for his education. It's also been acknowledged uh, by the proposition bench that public schools versus state schools is not anywhere near the main factor uh, in inequality in education or in career outcomes in Britain. As Barnaby also said, it's what your home and family like, life is like. The old boys network, uh, in terms of schooling, is dead. It's a left-wing con trick that there's a magic circle of the most prestigious employers that only want straight white male public school boys. Quite the opposite is true, and the notion itself uh, is very damaging. But perhaps, unfortunately, companies are generally focused on making money. They hire people on this basis, and if they hire people from public school backgrounds, it's because they think those students and their educations have real value. I remember very clearly a conversation with my good friend from university, Pierre Shepherd, who went to Magdalen School just down the road. Um, and at the point of his A-levels, um, his house tutor sat him down and said, Pierre, I'm deeply concerned. Due to your grades, I think you're going to have to consider somewhere like Exeter for university. When I was at school, the only person I remember coming to speak to us about university was from the University of Luton. Now, I'm sure the University of Luton has many fine qualities, but it tells a story um, that we were passively being ushered uh, towards places like that, and Pierre was being coached daily um, with the worst outcome potentially being Exeter. Once again, it would be nice to think that all students could be provided with such coaching, but it simply isn't practical. And so surely we must acknowledge that the ability to provide individual tuition and guidance does make a huge difference in getting the best out of people. And it simply isn't possible across the board in the state sector. Now, the proposition uh, have told you that uh, all these things are possible under a, a state system. They want every child to be equal, every flower to have the same number of petals, every parent to have the same resources. Again, a nice idea, but the comprehensive school system has been tried for 80 years. It could, uh, in that time, have, have legitimately been said to have been given a fair run. And in that time, what we have seen is actually um, a growth of the public school system. The proposition may also 
uh, refer to such nations as, as Holland, where grammar schools have all but taken over from public schools. But we have to be aware that other nations' models don't always work for a nation of our size and demographic differentiation. And they all come with different inequalities and problems of their own. Let us recall uh, Prime Minister uh, Blair's sweeping education, education, education reforms. They mean today that uh, a UK citizen that decides to send their children uh, to public schools are paying for their education twice in fees and taxation. And that can only be a benefit to the public purse, which we've heard is 3.5 billion. Even if one believes that public schools are a disaster, let them be a private disaster for those who wish to make that choice. And I don't think choice is disaster, is a disaster. I think it is the wonderful product of a free society. And we have all enjoyed and been privileged to utilize it to be here this evening, where even when we disagree, we support the rights of others to have different views. I hope that one day all those that want children will have them here this evening. And I hope that they will also have the blessing of being able to offer them the choice that we had and our parents had. Thank you.